Hey guys, I'm going to show you today the biggest difference between the old Google Drive Cloud Assignment and the new Google Assignment LTI 1.3. Many of you have been asking about how I um, incorporate my interactive notebooks from uh, like Google Slides um, into Canvas. And so I'm going to show you both ways in which you can do that and kind of compare each assignment um, and how you can use uh, Google each way with this. So let's get started. Let's go into the Google Drive Cloud Assignment. I'm going to show you how I would set this up. I use uh, Google Drive Cloud assignments a lot more just because it's what I'm used to and also since uh, the new Google assignment is so new, um, it does have a few little kinks that um, I'm just not ready to touch it yet, but it's still really great and I what they're trying to do with it, I think Canvas and Google are doing a really great job of um, setting that up for especially like the live stuff but let's show you the old one because it's really great too and I really like it so um, here I just have my directions and I, for each assignment they're a little bit different so it says to complete this assignment open up the Google slide at the do at the bottom um, it's not attached right now but there is a window that will pop up and then complete the Google assignment edit a bold document and submit it here for a grade so they do come back to this page and submit here. Um, so before I'm going to do that though, I'm just going to kind of touch on rubrics for SpeedGrader. So I'm just going to click plus rubric and then I'm actually going to find a rubric. The rubric I want to find is within my class. So it's in, should be in this one. And I'm just going to scroll through and find it here. So I can actually um, without having to import stuff, I can search for the um, rubrics this way, which is really nice. Here it is, uh, Interactive Notebook Module 1 Lesson 1, and then I'm just going to click Use This Rubric, and so now I have it right here. This is awesome, and um, that way you can make one rubric and add it to different assignments, and you can actually edit this, and then it creates a new rubric makes it really easy so I'm just gonna leave that there and then use this rubric for assignment publish I do want it to change because I do want the score to be 20 points and so now that's attached to this and then I click edit and you'll notice it already gave the points I'm just gonna leave it for um, the assignment group assignments but normally I would do uh, formative or summative we're going to leave it as points and then submission type. Wah. Okay, so submission type, you're going to click here and we're going to do external tools and then click find. And my district has lovely enough hit it at the very bottom because they don't want people to use the old one anymore, understandably so. And then um, when you click the old um LTI then from here is when your drive pops up and you can type in the name of the assignment so I want that one okay so then all I'm gonna do is I'm just going to provide a date for it we'll just say this Friday and we'll say Friday as well, and then click save. So now I have my directions up at the top. I always add a button that goes to a page that like gives specific instructions and has like a video tutorial on how to complete my, like the different assignments that I have. So that's really helpful. And then down here is the assignment attached at the bottom. Now I'm gonna show you what that looks like within the student view. Alright, so now on the student side I can see the due date up here, the point value, the submission type, and then when I have it available until. So the due date and the availability is the same. I see my directions, I can go to this page if I need to, and then you'll see that I have this window down here with a submit button. Now, if I really want to do, I could edit it from here, but you can see that's very difficult. So what I would do is click on this and it auto generates a copy. So this is actually my student copy. So I can go in here and now create 
and add edit this however I want. So I'll come in here, and then of course we zoom in a little bit, and I can say um, change uh, change in position. Okay, so then the students would essentially just fill this out, and then let's just say that they're done. Um, so right here. We would then go when we're finished, we would click this button submit. And it's now submitted and we can see over here there's a timestamp for when I have submitted that as a student. So that is a basic way of how the uh, Google Drive Cloud assignment works. Let's take a look now at the uh, new Google assignment. Okay, so I have a very similar setup so far, completing the interactive notebook, and then I have a few extra steps here that are different um, for the Google assignment, and we're going to actually walk through these. So, um, you know, we have to open it differently, and it actually takes us to new tabs that we have to navigate through. So, um, you can add a rubric down here. The unfortunate thing about the Google assignment as of right now the speed grader is not linked as far as I'm aware that could change of course um, by the time this video is posted who knows or by the time you're watching this video it could have changed um, but as of right now as far as I'm aware it is not currently working um, so as you can see I'm just going to add the rubric here but there's another there's a different way to do this okay and i'm going to show you so then of course we're going to click edit we're going to add this just because routine and then change again edit and this time instead so we have submission type again i'm going to do the same external tool but now i'm going to click on Google Assignment LTI 1.3. And this now, oops, we got to switch account. That's my student account. Here's my teacher account here. Okay, so now this window pops up and we are going to attach a document within our drive. So same kind of thing. I'm going to type in M1L1. Here's, here it is, Interactive Notebook. And then it says each student will get a copy. Now, this is where you can add a rubric, okay? So I can say this is 20 points and then provide a, create a new rubric within Google. And so then I would just enter my information and all I'm going to do for today's example is copy and paste the one in Canvas so they're identical. So I'm just going to really quickly show you how to create a rubric this way. So I actually have my rubric um, from my class over here and I'm just copying it down um, into uh, the Google assignment LTI. So I have slide two, completion and accuracy is kind of the description and then the points. So here's the point value, the next point value, and then the next one. And then I actually, so I don't have to redo all that work, you can go over here and then duplicate the criterion or delete it if you made a mistake. And then you can change the titles of these. So I'm going to do, this one's going to be a slide four, and this one's going to be slide three. And then we can see I'm at 15 points, so I need to do it one more time. Duplicate. And then this is going to be slide five. So now I'm at my 20 points and I'm going to do, at, oop, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to delete this part and then I'm at 20 points again. So I'm going to click save and then we have a rubric now attached to the assignment. And then I can add a due date if I want to. Let's just make it for this Friday at midnight. So we can do that in Canvas as well. Okay, so let's make this bigger again. So now that should be all set. And I'm not going to load it in a new tab. I don't want to do that. And then I'm going to add that assignment date. Save. 
And now it's going to, on my end, my teacher end, look like this. So now I can see the assignment. I will see the student submissions down here. And once they turn something in, I can view the file by clicking this. I can view the rubric. So let's look at this on the student end now. Okay, so now we're on the student end of this. And we can see again, same kind of format up at the top with the directions. And we're going to walk through these steps right now. So um, here is the Google assignment. So the first thing that a student needs to do is open the assignment. So they can actually see right here your files. There's the template. And then they can see the rubric right here. So let's click open assignment. And it opens up a new tab. And then from here, we can either, if we want to add a file to this, we can click add files, we can create a new document sheet, but we're not doing that because there is a template already made for us. So we're going to click get a new copy. Now we will open this copy. So now you can see I have my three tabs open. I have my Canvas page, I have the Google assignment like waiting room, I like to call it, I guess, and then the work room, which would be this. So now it auto generates a uh, Joshua Ryan Abalera, which is my wonderful colleague. And um, so the student's name will pop up over here and then they can start editing this within here. I'm just gonna do Let's just do change in position. And so then when they're done with the assignment, they will go back to this tab and then click submit. And they can resubmit it. And the thing that's nice is this is live where the other one is not. So on the teacher end, I could view this student going through this assignment live and make corrections that way. And then it tells me over here that once it's submitted that it says you're all set. Your assignment has been submitted. Okay, so from here, then I can go back over here and we can see <laughs> when I refresh, it says the same thing that we saw before where you're all set and the assignment is posted down here. And I, if I need to view it again, if I need to edit it, I can click here and go back and update it uh, for a grade. So we're on the teacher side of um, this assignment now. So when we scroll down, you'll see that I have one submitted assignment and I can see the student's name. And I'm going to now click on the student's name and this window pops up for me. So this is how I'm going to assign a grade for the student. So I'll just go through this and I can then click on the little different sections here. And I'm going to give this student 100% and I'm going to say great job. It's very similar to the speed grader. And then I'm going to return this assignment to the student so that way they can view it. And it says student will be notified and can check any grade you've left. Once it fully sends, there we go. And then essentially what I would do next is move on to the next student. All right, so since I have graded it within Google, the Google assignment, now, and I've, I've returned it to the student as well, when I go to the speed grader now, the speed grader, while there's no preview, it did record that score. So I didn't put that in. That auto-generated once I added um, the score to the Google assignment. But when you use Google assignment, you need to make sure that you are using the rubric in order for it to be added to the, the grade book within Canvas. So that is how the two different Google assignments compare within Canvas. We have the old and the new. Of course, I have my preference with the old one just because there's not as many clicks with the Google 
drive cloud assignment. Other than that though, I love what they're doing with it with the whole grading in live time. The, it's really awesome. I do think though that there are too many clicks. One last thing before I end here. If you are not able to um, have the Google Drive or the Google Assignment LTI within Canvas right now, make sure you go to your settings and add the application. So you just go to settings, apps, and then type Google, and then Google Apps. You're gonna add the app, but before you do that, you need to scroll down here and click the installation instructions, click here. Generate LTI key and secret. You're gonna copy this code and this code one at a time. Oop. And when you do that, you'll go back here. Google, you scroll down, uh, you're going to go to installation instructions first, right click it, open this in a new link, generate a LTI uh, key, so then you're going to copy these two codes, go back to your app, click add, and then paste the consumer key and the shared secret, and then add the application, and then you will have uh, the external tool for Google. Just a little last piece, just in case your district has not added it. Alrighty, guys, so that is how um, the Google assignments work. I hope that this was helpful. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments. Would love to hear from you. Thanks, everyone.